All right, so um, my video update this week is pretty technical, so I thought I would just cover all the features, or at least a decent amount of them that I added separately, and then just go, if you want to stick around after this, uh, I'll go over some of the technical aspects of what I've done. So I guess a real brief example here is now you can go into edit mode and actually manipulate the vertices and polygons of the mesh. So you can actually mess around and do 3D modeling. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I actually have algorithms here to actually do things like subdivide, split quads to triangles, smooth the mesh, I got algorithms to do smooth, so everything Virto Studio could do before. If I pick this, maybe I just want to select all the connected verts. So that's all in place, which is really nice. I'm just going to go ahead and also pull up. Now you can go into edit mode and you can bring up the texture coordinate editor. and you can manipulate the actual texture map coordinates which is another feature from Virto that I really wanted to uh, to bring in so I got that you can duplicate things now which is kinda nice So everything you expect a 3D modeling app to do is in place, but there's still a lot of work ahead of me. Hey. Okay. So guys, this is going to be the final video update on my HoloLens project. Uh, and that's simply because um, most of the ch like challenging aspects of the project, things that were big hurdles, are actually kind of behind me. And now it's really just the final push towards version 1.0 release. So the next video you guys see on my channel is actually going to be probably the, uh, the video for the actual release of the app. So uh, catching you guys up quickly on where I am, um, basically just today I finished um, one of the biggest modes of the app that I knew was going to be difficult to deal with, and that was edit mode. So in Virto Studio, typically you can manipulate it, uh, a 3D model in object mode, which consists of moving it around, rotating it, scaling it, and so forth. But, you know, the big uh, feature of 3D modeling applications is to be able to select any kind of 3D model and then edit that model down to its most um, atomic components, you know, the vertices, the polygons, and then run all the algorithms that the 3D modeling program has to, to manipulate um, and, and, and to post-process or just in general uh, process uh, those polygons. So uh, I knew that was going to be a challenge for me to do on the HoloLens simply because unlike traditional 3D modeling software, I have to render the model at the same time I'm operating on it because if I pause the, the rendering thread to do a very expensive operation such as calculating normal vectors or uh, smoothing the mesh and so forth, um, I will freeze up the virtual reality experience. And I've talked about this in the other videos, I just can't do it. Um, so even though Virto Studio was not originally designed to be a uh, concurrent application with multiple threads accessing multiple resources at the same time, I had to, I had to plan for that architecturally. Um, the simplest aspect of what that is, is I basically have to render a model at the same time another thread is editing that model, and I have to make sure everything doesn't crash. Uh, and it's even more fun because I cannot use locks on the main thread if those locks are going to block the main thread for any significant amount of time. So I had to really dive into the literature as far as what you can do um, with both low-level uh, memory data structures in C and uh, C++ data structures, what is considered thread safe to be done concurrently without mutex locks and what needs to be. And the general consensus is usually uh, if it's deemed thread safe uh, in the class for this operation, you, you can 
read multiple data structures at the same time concurrently without a lock. So one thread can read through uh, a resource at the same time another thread is reading through it, but you cannot write to one while the other one is reading it. If you do that, then it's considered thread unsafe. Uh, so let me explain what I mean, or, or better yet, why don't I talk about what I did to take care of that. So uh, again, like I said, the, the editing threads have to manipulate the vertices of the polygon writing, in other words, while the rendering thread is rendering that mesh. So how the hell did I get around that? Because the rendering thread cannot wait or block for the editing thread to finish. So um, OpenGL, or, or I should basically say graphics APIs, inherently kind of took care of that for me. The basic gist of, uh, of rendering a 3D model in OpenGL is that you generate all the data that you need for the model to exist on the CPU. And then when you're finished, you populate a GPU buffer. In other words, you copy the vertices from the, uh, the CPU to the GPU. And then that buffer exists kind of as this read-only, very high-performance resource that the, that the graphics device uses to render the model as many times as it wants to. So that kind of, when I thought about that, basically made me realize that I had what I needed already. I could do all of the editing on a background thread in Virto Studio on the in RAM CPU accessible uh, buffers. But then when the editing was finished, I would populate the GPU buffer on the rendering thread. And that final step is so fast. If I run that on the rendering thread, it'll always be fast enough and I won't have to worry about it. So, but I did was, unlike with Virto Studio, where I blurred the lines a lot more, and, and I definitely didn't do this, but for the holographic version, I was going to make it a law that the um, the CPU, or better yet, the 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 the, the, um, the in RAM CPU accessible edit buffers for the 3D modeling data was going to be only belonging to the background thread editing task and the, and the rendering thread could never touch those as, uh, at any time concurrent with the render. So the rendering thread was not allowed to access those. So those belong to the, the, the editing threads. And then the just GPU buffers and all the resources needed to render those were gonna belong to the render thread. And the idea was is the background threads were always gonna be updating the background data. And then when they were finished, they would schedule um, a function to run on the main thread to kind of catch that last part and then copy those, reading them only over to the GPU. So now we thoroughly confuse the shit out of you guys. Uh, I'll walk you through exactly an uh, example of this. So this class right here uh, is a, one of my uh, UI, Virto UI or VUI uh, view controller subclasses. And it's the, it's the, the view controller that's responsible for showing the green edit mode toolbar that pops up when you go into edit mode in the app. And the idea here is uh, my whole UI framework, which I, I haven't gone into a lot of detail with, uh, with you guys yet, but the basic gist is the entire thing is, is, is uh, based upon um, subclassing views and view controllers or for, for holographic stuff, spaces and space controllers. And then um, implementing uh, an override function for how to actually create that view and then adding some methods for how to handle events when certain uh, UI components are activated. So in this particular example, uh, the edit mode toolbar view controller, basically all it does is um, creates a toolbar type, which I have, um, populate some items for that toolbar type, uh, namely uh, the the label that tells you how many um, edit how many vertices are, exist in the model, how many faces. Uh, segmented controls for switching between point and face selection, which is a common task done in the app. Um, and then menu buttons or buttons that will bring out call out menus for mesh operations, vertex operations, and then the extrude, which kind of lives by itself. Um, and uh, essentially that's it. So once I create those into a toolbar, I tell the superclass that the view for this view controller is the one I just created, the local variable called root view, which I've added the toolbar as a sub view of. And once I do that, it's uh, pretty simple for me to just hook everything up. So I kind of glossed over that, but here's an example of one button I created using the um, button constructor for the C++11 type. And then here I have this mechanism where I kind of Virto UI style for hooking um, events up to buttons, or, or I should say controls. 
I have these lambda functions which exist inside most of my control types in Virto UI, and I made those public because I didn't want to create a setter for them. I just thought that this looked nicer uh, code style. This is one of the very few times where I actually allow myself direct access to uh, public data uh, members from my classes. But the idea here is I can set this equal to the standard C++11 bind function, which allows me to bind one of my own methods to the Lambda function that this thing expects. So the idea here is in layman's terms, when this button is pressed, on mesh options pressed gets called in my class. So then I'm able to go in here, and then it kind of goes on so forth. This is how the entire app works. I press something, I create another view controller, which has the UI for that aspect of the app, and then I ask it to push the modal view controller. And what that does is because this is running in a holographic environment, a new slate pops up just a little bit forward of the button that was pressed, and then up comes that, and it modally disables all the other stuff on the background so you can't press things you shouldn't be able to press. Um, so the idea for the 3D modeling editing stuff, which it took me a really long time to just get to talking about that, when I press the primitive options menu, which is the, uh, the menu that contains almost, almost all of the 3D modeling algorithms in the app, which is basically this list, if I press that, I, I bring out another um, menu, UI menu type, which displays that list. And then um, this is me just populating what component should go on that list. When the item is selected, I run this little local Lambda, and that's where I actually finally start doing some of the 3D modeling operations. Man, this is complicated. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I can't keep doing these videos, simply because this stuff's getting so big, there's no humanly way I could keep going into all of it. Uh, so, the, so the idea here is if I select a certain algorithm, let's pick something interesting like subdivide. I have a little convenience method that I have uh, implemented uh, as part of the, uh, the scene space controller. And this is what does what I, what I was talking about just five minutes ago. I run a background edit task, which means this block, this function right here, runs in the background thread concurrently with the render thread. And all it really does is, is tries to run subdivide selection. And then when it is finished, the second argument, this block, is ran on the main thread. And uh, essentially what happens here is once the background comp computation is finished, remember, while this expensive operation is running, the holographic app is still running, so you're able to turn your head around, look, you just can't press anything because essentially you're going to see a busy indicator once I get around to putting it there. So once it's finished, this block then takes all of the data that was updated from the, the background thread and calls functions to update the GPU buffers to basically say, all right, the buffers that need to handle the rendering in the model have changed. Uh, I've, uh, the center points, which is something I use to render for uh, triangle selection mode, um, that might have changed. And then the topology, which is used to generate the wireframe buffers, has changed. None of this was necessary in the, uh, the iPad version of the app because I was able to um, not worry about concurrent rendering, but here it is. And then again, anything that's used to render VBOs to handle the selection state, which again has to be copied to a safe section of the, uh, the render thread to handle which points need to be highlighted or not, that needs to be updated here. So that's essentially how the editing works. Once I was able to hash out this algorithm, and again, the actual implementation of this stuff running on a background thread versus the other things scheduling later, that goes into the whole architecture of my VGL engine, which I had to build on top of in layers to finally get to this point. But once I was able to get this to be really convenient in this little high level method to handle this, all my editing functions were able to follow the same lead. And um, I'm really excited because this crap all just miraculously managed to start working in a, in a it's relatively stable fashion. And after this, I was able to just call all the algorithms I wrote in the original Verdo Studio in the first place, and those were all the same. So I was able to blast through edit mode rather quickly, um, which is awesome uh, after I got this to work. One thing I forgot to mention is m many of these scene methods, which go into my actual algorithms, and this is some... This is some really technical Virto Studio 3D modeling stuff. I don't want to get into this, um, but um, the background threads do uh, use a mutex lock. Here it is. 
on the edit target or, or on the current model that's being edited. And the reason why I have to use a lock there is because there is another background thread, the one that's doing the ray casting to see where the cursor should appear. And that does run concurrently with the, um, the edit threads. And I have to make sure those do block. I'm okay with background threads blocking because those don't screw up the rendering of the VR. Um, but I never allow the render thread to touch resources that would block or block themselves. Um, so that's essentially uh, where I'm at with the render or with the edit mode stuff. That's done. At this point, I just need to take care of uh, a bunch of housekeeping. I need to bring back certain features that I know are going to need to be in this app because it's going to be a, a little bit more of an expensive app because it's so so many features and VR is, you know, harder to do. So I got to put some of those things in. I got to fix a lot of bugs. I need to save. <laughs> I don't I don't even have saving and loading yet. I know that seems ridiculous, but I wanted to kind of save that as a reward for the end of all these other less fun to do features or harder to do stuff. So I do saving and loading, importing of OBJ and FBX files. I still got to bring all that back. Um, but I'm really getting there. Um, I expect... Um, sooner than later this thing will eventually get to be finished um it's gotten really huge i mean the virto the virto studio engine itself um is over sixty thousand lines of code now uh it's too big to even go through uh virto ui i believe is is is, is approaching between five and ten thousand which is built on top of the virto studio graphics engine uh, the http stuff is small but i need it to do like google drive integration and the actual high high level hololens app itself has so many so many little ui components in it this thing's up to about eight thousand lines of code and which is silly because this entire thing is using a library that i invented so um if there was ever a time in my life where i've done insane amount of software engineering completely by myself this is it so um Anyway, this, like I said, this is the last update. It's really just going to be more of this. These videos aren't going to be very interesting uh, if they aren't not, not all that interesting already. I mean, um, there's just only so much I can talk about this. It was, in the beginning, it was more romantic that I was trying to do something I would never done before, and it was really hard. And now it's just like, okay, you know, I got to push through and just keep doing more of the same until it's finished. Uh, that's one of the things about software engineering that, or really game programming or any kind of programming that people don't really tell you about. It's really fun in the beginning, and towards the end, you start getting really sick of seeing the same project every day. And what separates people, you know, is, is the ones that can really push through and finish. And I intend to be one of those. So thanks a lot for all your guys' support throughout this project. Um, I will be producing other videos in the interim, but nothing more on this until it's done. So thanks for, uh, thanks for watching.